So this morning, we're just going to press in and just see what God has for us this morning. So if you guys would just be able to just read the screens and read all the stuff that's on the screens, the decorations, the instructions for today. Um, and then we're just going to have some intercession prayer for our country. Um, some of us have been here for four hours this morning already, just, um, just pressing into what God has for us as a church. I feel like that God wants something different for his church today, and he wants to move to a different place in the church to where we're not stuck in the same routines that we're used to and the same norm that we're used to from the church. So you guys know that Life of Love is, is formed that way, that we want to move how Holy Spirit has us move. So today, is, is a, this week, as I entered into prayer and asked him what he wanted for today, I felt like that he was just saying, just no worship music um, as far as live worship music and no preaching today, but he just wanted to press in, wanted us to press into him in a deeper relationship with him and get to know him more intimately this morning. And, he, and as we do that, I want you to just open your heart this morning to whatever he has for you, to whatever he wants for you, to the revelation that he wants you to grab. Because the more we get to know him, the more we lean on Jesus, the more he's going to reveal to us about who he is and also about who we are. So this morning, press into your identity, just your complete identity, to know that you were dreamed before the foundation of the earth to be an amazing son and daughter. And that's what he wants for you today. He wants you to press in like you've never done before. I know sometimes it, it, it's, it's going to seem a little um, maybe awkward to some. But if you just stay to the end, we're going to have some baptism at the end. And um, just watch what God does through that. So just, uh, just press in. And young ones, teenagers, just, just see what God wants you to do in this time. Because it's just going to be an amazing time just soaking in Him. And worshiping him and just loving him this morning. So the instructions will be on the screens to, for your, what to do, what you guys could do. Um, so let's just press in this morning.
So we have several people out this morning. Some are sick. Some are traveling. We just intercede for them in prayer this morning as well. Our 95-year-old Helen, she's just asking for prayer this morning that um, she's been having a rough time. So just continue to pray for her. Some of our people have been exposed to COVID. They don't have it. They've just been exposed to it. So they're quarantining for a little, just a little bit to make sure they don't have anything, that they don't bring anything here. We've not had one person from this church get COVID, and we're thankful to God for that. Thankful that God is watching over us. The Holy Spirit is prevalent in every, every way. thank you this morning for who you are, for who we are in you. Father, we thank you for that place in your heart that you've carved out for each and every one of us, Father. For you know us. Your desire for us, God, as we reach down to our heart's mind and just glorify you, become intimate with you, have such a relationship with you, then it changes everything in our lives. Father, we thank you that you are a powerful God, that you are an all-knowing God. We thank you for joy and peace and strength. Father, we thank you for this time of exposure that we're going through. I ask that no one would have fear in their heart, in their mind's eye, about what is going on in our world today. But know that, Father, that you have everything in control. That you know what's going on and you have a greater plan than what we can even see. Father, I ask this morning that you would just reveal some of that plan to us. Just give us a glimpse of what you have and what you are doing. Father, we do pray this morning for our country for our leaders. God, that victory would prevail this morning in each heart, both sides of the aisle, Father, that hearts would be won, lives would be changed. Father, it's not too late. No matter how deep, no matter how dark someone has been in their life, it's not too late to change to you, to come to you, to come running, to fall to the knees. Father, to ask you for forgiveness. Thank you, God, that you're going to move on hearts today. Father, we pray against the wickedness of this world. Pray against the schemes of the enemy that's tried to come in and wreck this beautiful country. And strip us of what we've stood on for so many years. The Word of God is our foundation. Father, I ask that you would just continue to take that back and remind people that your Word is our foundation. We were founded on truth, trust, integrity, Father, we were founded on all these things. Seems like we've lost track of some of them down through the years. Things have become about power and money and fame. Father, I asked this morning you would take people to back to their first love. They never met you, God. They would come to know you this morning. They never had a revelation. They would come and get one this morning. 
Father, I ask that your people would pray in their language. Prayer language that you've given them, Father, they would pray this morning. They would sing in that language this morning. God, they would glorify you. I believe, Lord, that you show me that in intercession prayer, in a time of speaking in an unknown tongue, Lord, God, that when we speak those things, we're speaking things of heaven, and we're speaking healing into our own lives. For the words that come out of our mouth are from heaven, straight from you. God, and they're going to intercede in our life, even though we don't understand what we say sometimes. But you know, and you receive it, and you understand it. And Father, just the tone that we speak in resonates with our mind, and our will, and our emotions, our soul, man. It resonates to the point that it brings healing. Father, we thank you that you are healing broken parts of our lives from, from even as a young man, young boy. God, even as a young daughter, a mother, a father. God, that you're healing us where we've been broken off. God, you're healing us. In places that we didn't know we need healed. Father, we thank you for right now, Lord, this time that we get to spend with you. Father, we live in a world that's chaotic. We live in a world that's full of struggle and stress. But Father, we ask this morning that you would just take all of that away that we would clear our minds this morning and focus upon you and what you want for us, what you want for this day, what you want for this region. Father, I ask that you would show us how to conquer our city and our region for you, God, that we can reach into our country. Father, how can we be a people that can intercede for a country we can't even get our homes straight we can't even get our city straight father we ask that you would go to our homes you would go to this city martinsville indiana this region the state of indiana father in this country and throughout the world father you would help us to be intercessors in prayer god that we would put things first that we would get these things in order and get life in order in our own lives. God, that our children would grow up and be children on fire for you. Not children that are on fire for the things of the world. Or for the, everything that the world has to offer. Father, I thank you this morning that you have created us to be a people that desire relationship. And desire to be loved. Father, and that desire comes from you. That love comes from you. Father, for you are love. You're the very essence of love. And Father, we thank you this morning that you're pressing into us as we're pressing into you. We thank you this morning, God, that we don't have to be entertained by anything, but that we can just sit in your presence and that we can host you, Lord, but we can sit in your presence, Lord, Father, I thank you that you're creating a people that would bring something to the house of prayer and not come expecting to get something from the house of prayer. Father, help us to raise up that people that will want to come and bring what they receive throughout the week in prayer. That they want to bring it and insert it into the service on Sundays or Wednesdays or whatever day that we're here. That it wouldn't be about what can you do for me, but Lord, about what can we do for you. Fathers, we attempt great things for you. We expect great things from you. Thank you for the wave. For the wave this morning your spirit, of your holiness, of your goodness. Thank you, Father. Pray for the ones this morning, God, that don't know you, that have no idea who you are. They've heard your name. They've seen people talk about you. They've seen people 
say that they know you, but yet they live a different way. Father, I ask this morning that you would give them the truth of who you are. God, that we would not put you in a box this morning. That we would just decree your word over these hearts this morning. Of repentance. Father, we have to repent. Our nation has to repent. All the babies that were lost, Lord. All the lives that have lost through sickness. Father, we just repent this morning on behalf of our country, on behalf of our nation, on behalf of this city. We repent this morning. Thank you, Father, for revealing things in hearts this morning. Father, I ask that you just bring a hunger into hearts of your people this morning. your name will be glorified. It's your name would be glorified. say yes to you, Jesus, this morning. Yes to whatever you want, to whatever you have for us. Yes, Father. No matter what it is, yes. Yes, Jesus. Yes to shutting off the world, the things of the world. Yes to coming into a deeper, intimate relationship with you. Yes, to receiving the Holy Spirit baptism this morning. Yes, to receiving a prayer language this morning if we don't have it. exists from the spoken word of God. When he said those first words, let there be light. And from that moment, the universe started to grow. It's still growing today. That word was so powerful. The vibration, the tone from that word was so powerful. It's still growing today. Our universe is getting more vast and more vast and more vast. And it's just going to continue to go until he comes to take us home. See, this is not our home. Some of us treat it like it is our final resting place, but it's not. We have greater things in store. God has greater things in store for us than this. He wants the best for you. We were made to love him. We were made to be a people that would want to love him willingly. That's why he gives us the free will. To choose to love him. Not just so we can go to hell. But so we can see people one. To the kingdom. People who don't know. People who don't understand. That they could be one to the kingdom through our living. Through our right living. Not our halfway living but our complete right living for Him.
people have to see something different from us. Guys, people have to see something different. When they come in our presence, which holds the presence of God, they have to feel something different. They have to feel more peace, more strength. They have to feel a different kind of love than what they've ever been exposed to. Press in this morning. Press in this morning. Give him your all. Watch what he does. Watch what he does. When I gave my life to Jesus, I knew that the enemy would take me back at any given time. So you don't have to worry about that. He'll take you back. But God wants so much more for you. Don't give the enemy any power. Don't give him any chance. So always speak truth. Speak without judgment. Speak without criticizing. If you talk to someone about someone else, about a problem, make sure it's someone you're talking to is someone that's going to help with the problem. That's how you can tell if something's gossip or not when you're speaking to someone about what someone's done or about a solution to a problem. Don't ever go to someone and tell them something about someone else if they're not part of the solution. Then it becomes gossip. Gossip will destroy. It will destroy lives. It will put a falseness out there about people it's not true. We want to always speak truth about people. We want to break off the traditions of this world and grab a hold of what God has for us. See, the church, it seems like, has conformed to the world. We're not supposed to do that because we're not of the world. feel like the Lord is saying that you have a word for us this morning. judgment upon the nation, upon the church, upon its people. Do not fear because judgment is not a bad thing. 
it's a word that is hard, and the church has made it hard because it doesn't understand the beauty of the blood, the cross. It doesn't understand the beauty of who God is and the love that he is as a father. Do not be intimidated by what you see in our nation right now. God is control. He is in control. Let us go to our knees and pray. And let us stand with God and fight for justice and freedom for all mankind. alive since this, since the uh, election has been moving forth. There's been so much talk, and it's this one, Second Chronicles. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from your wicked ways, Church, let us humble ourselves before the Almighty God. Let us seek His face. Let us turn from our wicked ways. This is a time, this nation, there are many to be saved. We have a harvest coming, church. There's a harvest coming. We have got to be ready for the harvest. We have got to be ready for a house full of people that are coming and they're going to be crying out to us. Show me Jesus. Give me Jesus. I want to be saved. things that I've seen. My husband and I have been talking about it. I don't fear because God, there is no fear in God. God knows what he's doing. God's got a plan. And as, as impossible as this may sound, Trump, President Trump, knows what's going on. Let's stand and let's pray. Let's stand and let's pray for justice. Hallelujah, Lord. Let us stand and pray for justice and his righteousness to come.
and righteousness. And Father, I thank you that the winds of justice is blowing. Though we may not understand, nor we may not under understand what we see in this, Father, your winds of justice and righteousness are blowing.
here, I looked up the definition of integrity, and it has several meanings. The one that stood out to me was the state of being whole and undivided, upholding territorial integrity and national sovereignty. church body this shows the integrity of our father that we mirror who you are that we flow with you in every aspect. When you say go, we go. When you say stop, we stop. Give to the Lord glory, do his name. Bring an offering and come before him. Oh, worship the Lord in beauty and holiness. Tremble before him, all the earth. The world also is firmly established. It shall not be moved. Let the heavens rejoice and let the earth be glad. And let them say among the nations, the Lord reigns. Let the sea roar and all that his fullness. Let the field rejoice all that is in it. Then the trees of the woods shall rejoice before the Lord, for he is coming to judge the earth. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. And I say, save us, O oh God of our salvation. Gather us together and deliver us from the Gentiles to give thanks to your holy name, to triumph in your praise. Blessed is the God of Israel. From everlasting to everlasting. And all the people said, Amen and praise the Lord.
this morning before service. I felt led to take a walk behind the building. And as I was walking, I looked over at the wall and seen there was paint peeling off. And I asked the Lord what he was doing for this day. He took my eyes back to that peeling paint. And I heard him say, I'm peeling back the layers of deceit. Then I heard my church will prevail because I prevailed. I then felt led to look up the word prevail. That means to prove more powerful than opposing forces. Be victorious. We thank you, God. We thank you. We hear the Lord say, rest in my peace. Rest. John 14, 27 says, peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it not be afraid. Rest is a calming of the winds. It's a refreshing. Peace is God's gift of wholeness. We thank you, Father. We thank you for a mighty move. We thank you for the winds of change. We thank you that your word is in fact a lamp unto our feet and a light to our path. And that you've lit the path. Thank you for the spirit of revelation and the spirit of wisdom. Leading our way, guiding our way. Thank you for an army arising. The worshipers are rising who will worship in spirit and in truth. Thank you, Father, that the horse is prepared for battle, but victory belongs to our Lord.
just want to thank you guys for pressing in this morning. And just being obedient to that, to pressing into what Father has for you this morning. I'll tell you what, there's greater things coming. There's greater things in this region. There's greater things coming for it. every one of us. Financial blessings, spiritual blessings, physical blessings. He wants all that for us. We just have to press in and grab a hold of it. We have to say yes to God and give Him every part of us. Every part of us. Not, not, just, not just a little segment of us or a little piece here and a little piece here. But every part of us is what He's asking for. He's asking to lay every... And I just encourage you... Turn this up just a little bit. I just encourage you guys just to lay everything down. Everything that's in your life, lay it down. And then let Him give you the things back that He wants you to have. Lay everything down. Doesn't matter whether it's good or bad. Lay it down and let him give it back to you as he wants you to have it back. Watch how free your life becomes. Watch how free your life becomes when you lay down some social media. You lay down some television. You lay down some time that you just go out and have fun. And just give that all to him and watch what he gives back to you. He's going to bring the things back to you that are going to make you grow, make you wholesome that are going to nourish you, that are going to bring you up in a way that um, you've never been brought up before. It's going to teach you how to raise your kids in a way that you weren't taught how to be raised. Every one of us. You know, we only learn from what we were taught. We only know what our parents taught us and what the schools taught us. But I feel like Jesus has something more for us, something that he wants to teach us a new revelation that he wants to give us on how to raise our kids, how to interact with family, how to be a family, how to be a peaceful family, to get together for the holidays and have peace and not chaos. I know when my family gets together, it seems like it's just chaos sometimes, but he wants to bring peace in all those areas, really for every one of us. So I thank you guys this morning. I was, feel like I was obedient with ask, when he asked me this morning just to, because we practice worship. We already had our things set, what we were going to do. But Jesus said, I'd rather you do this. And so, this is what. We have to do that. We have to hear the voice of God and do what he says to do. Sometimes it's, it's different than what we want to do or the direction that we're going even. Jimmy, you have something? You can come up here. <laughs> uh, when I was praying this morning, I wasn't going to say anything, but you touched on it. Uh, I felt like God was telling me that uh, he's going to release a new level of authority to the church. And I feel like this authority is going to come in like a wave. And, you know, that sounds powerful. And it sounds, you know, that's, oh, that really sounds good, Jim. That sounds powerful. But what's that mean to each one of us individually? You have the mind of Christ. You carry the kingdom of God within you. And he's talking about raising families. The child sitting on your lap could be the next president of the United States. Well, not the next one like the President of the United States someday. And you know, you might be sitting there, well, I'm just from small town Indiana. You know, I really can't make it. You can make a difference. You have the mind of Christ. You carry the kingdom of God within you. Wherever you go, people see God. Yes. So Father, we just thank you for releasing this new level of authority over us. Help us realize who we are and what we carry. Come to us in our dreams, God. Come to us when we're driving the car, when our mind is just idle. Speak to us, God. Give us visions. Lord. Give us words. Help us encourage people. Give us solutions, Lord. We ask for solutions. Help us not fret. Help us, you know, get solutions to our issues, God. We just thank you for loving us the way you do. Thank you for your love. Amen. 
So we have a brave soul that wants to just sing a song. So we're going to just invite that and let her do that. Jason, thank you so much. And I heard a message by Reinhardt Bumpke, and he said he was talking about, and I'm, don't, I'm not saying anything bad about worship or your preparation. I love it, I love it, I love it. And he said, you guys try and create an atmosphere sometimes so much. He said, and it's putting the Holy Spirit in a jar. He said, and I... And I just want to thank you. We didn't put the Holy Spirit in a jar this morning. We let him loose. Hallelujah. This has been a blessed morning. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right, so we're going to go into this, the baptism. So if you're, is there anybody that wants to get baptized that has not been baptized before? I mean, we can, we can find you some clothes or something if you need them. we got towels. We know we got one baptism that um, we're going to get ready for. Also, Helen, our dear Helen, up front here in the front row, is her. she's celebrating her 16th birthday. And so we're just going to help her celebrate that. So at the end of the service, when we close the service, there's cake and stuff back there. So go um, grab a piece of cake and just tell her happy birthday. And um, if you have a word of knowledge for her, give it to her. Um, God's pressing into her life. She's come such a long way from where she was. And her state of mind where she was is just that quick, that simple, how God can just reverse our mind from suicidal thoughts to getting ready to act, to attempting it several different times, to not doing that anymore and just pressing into the goodness of God. You know, you remember Helen when, and, and, and when she got in the water that very first time when she come here, she was beat down, ready to end everything. Cuts all up and down both arms. I mean, hundreds of cuts up and down both arms. And she's cut free today. She's been cut free since the revival. And she got in that water and the Lord told her how beautiful she was. And she really feels beautiful. And she is beautiful. But she sees it for the first time, how he sees her. 
And that's what's so amazing that God loves each and every one of us so much that he wants to show us how beautiful we are, how amazing we are, how wonderfully made that we are. It is so awesome. So, Helen, thank you for sticking in. Thank you for giving the Lord reign over your life. It's just been amazing. And she's just she's just growing so much. And we've seen such a flip around. And it doesn't take that long. You know, you guys think sometimes that you get a track through your sin to get to Jesus. You don't. You don't. You turn around and he's there. Wherever you're at, you turn around and he's there. So remember that. think about it. I didn't even want to wake up the next day and then now I'm about to be 16 and I'm sitting here in the house of the Lord with all these people that love me and it's awesome. You guys have been through a lot in life. But this girl, her testimony of the stuff that she's been through before she turned 16 is just unbelievable. I mean, it's just unbelievable the, the, the trauma that she's been through in her life. It's really unbelievable. In and out of foster care, locked in closets, beat, abused, and all before the age of 16. That's what's wrong with America today. The church, I feel like it's fell today. We need to stand back up and we need to stand for what God says to stand for and fight for what's right. Not for what the, the way of the world, but fight for what He wants, for what the Word says. The Scripture is true, the Word is true. We need to fight for what is right, for the Word of God. If you don't have a Bible, Goodwill gives them out. Go get one. I'll buy you one. Buy one. Get one. Get into it. And let the Lord speak to you. He loves each and every one of us. He don't want any of us to perish. His word says that. It's not about making it to heaven, guys. Really, it's not. That's the easiest part of it. The easiest part is to get saved and, and going to heaven. It's about what your mission is here. What God has called for you to do here in this place. Each and every one of us have a voice and we carry a sound that will break walls down for other people. You're going to be able to touch people. I told John, he's going to be able to touch people that I cannot touch. He's going to be able to reach down into people's lives that I will never be able to reach into or never have access to. And you guys are the same way. You have access to so many people that I will never be able to touch. That's why God puts you and made us each one individual and different because our different personalities, our different testimonies are going to rule and reign in people's lives in a way that Holy Spirit can come down, come into their lives when walls come down through our testimony, through what we say to them, how we love them, how we show them the love of Jesus, how we show them the true love of Jesus and not just the imitated, fake, false, what we've learned through the church love of Jesus, but really a true relationship with Jesus. That's what people want to see. That's what they're crying out for. They're crying out for something real, something true. So we thank God for that this morning. So we're going to do this baptism, and then after that, we're going to be able to um, cut some cake and have a good time. So you, get, you ready to be baptized?